Hey everyone, it's Tom Kradzer with another Rockstar Minute. And listen, this week there are some stuff happening in the financial markets that hasn't happened since the last financial crisis about 10 years ago. So when we saw this, it kind of piqued our attention and it got a little bit of press, but it hasn't got a lot of press. And this has the possibility of impacting the US markets, which will ultimately impact Canada and the Bank of Canada's interest rate decisions, which then have an impact on real estate investors right here in this country. So we like paying attention to this stuff. Maybe this just all blows over and this is not a big deal Deal at all, but maybe this is the start of something we really all need to be paying attention to. So that's why I wanted to share some of this stuff. And for that, I'm going to actually switch over to my desktop so I can share some of the headlines and some of the sh chart. I was about to say charts, <laughs> charts, charts that we want to share with you today. So let's do that right now. So here's what's going on. This is a Financial Post article from a couple days ago, and it basically said, this is crazy. Here's how the repo rate panic that everybody is talking about went down. And basically what happened is a couple days ago, overnight, there was a lack of liquidity. So there was a lack of cash in the US financial system and the Federal Reserve has done something they haven't done in about a decade since the last financial crisis. This is why it's kind of interesting news to us. They pushed in $53 billion of cash that the market needed that it didn't have. And this was like a big deal. And it got some attention, but it hasn't really got a lot of attention. And the reason it's a big deal is that the Fed has not had to do an emergency pushing of cash into the economy like this in this fashion since the last financial crisis. So it gets our attention. It's like, what's going on? Is this the start of a new panic? Is something is this just a little blip that's going to just go away in a couple days? But here's what happened the next day. So on Wednesday, they had to do it again. And they had to go right up to the legal maximum of $75 billion. And then today, Thursday, September 19th, they did it again, right up to the legal maximum of $75 billion. And we, from what we understand, if they go over $75 billion, they actually have to announce quantitative easing again. And I don't think that's something they really want to do just yet. Um, but this is kind of what's happening. And so when you look at some other stuff, let me flip over to another website here. This is the Congressional Budgets Office, office in the U.S. There are projections of deficits for the next 10 years. And what's interesting here is if you look at the 10 years before the financial uh, crisis of 2008, you can see the U.S. actually ran surpluses and some deficits, definitely some deficits. But then after the financial crisis, they ran like these monster deficits and it got a little bit better. But this last 10 years has been pretty bad and it's added a lot of debt to the US system and the global financial system. And you can see they're making some projections. So this is interesting to me because if they're running deficits like this size in the last 10 years and there hasn't been any financial panic or crisis in the last 10 years, do these projections, are these actually accurate? Because from reading this stuff that the US puts out, these projections anticipate no real recessions going forward. So what happens if there's a recession or like a financial panic? What does this stuff look like then? And if I flip over to this page here, global debt now sits at $246 trillion. I mean, that's a lot. And if you look at a Financial Times article that I found, um, kind of has the historic global debt. In 2007, 2008, kind of like the start of the financial crisis. Let me look carefully here. It looks like it was just over... 150 trillion dollars globally, 160 trillion, 170 trillion, whatever that amount there right is. But you can see now today, if I flip back to this other one, we're at 246. So we've gone up from about 160, 170 to 246. So now what happens if there's a financial panic? Where do we go to from here? Does this 246 go to like 350, 450, 500? And I think the Fed is starting to take notice on some of this stuff because even though that, you know, U.S. Un unemployment is being announced at really low and great rates and stuff like that, they actually cut rates. So here's a really interesting chart um, that we can look at here. Let me kind of click off this. Let me refresh this page here for a second. Um, if you look at the at the at at this um, Fed funds rate from 2006 or 7, um, it was like, you know, 5%. And then they had to drop it down about five points during that financial crisis. Well, today they only got it back up over this last 10 years to like two and a half percent. And they just dropped it yesterday a quarter point. So if it took a five point decrease in rates to stem off the last financial crisis, if we're facing another one right now or at some point in our future, how are they gonna go down another five points? Is this how we get to negative interest rates? And then now to bring it full circle to Canada, what does Canada do? 
because yesterday the Fed did officially cut. They cut a quarter point. The Bank of Canada, are they going to cut this fall again? Are they going to just kind of stay strong and not cut? But as real estate investors, if we are headed to lower interest rates from here, what's that going to do to pop property prices? I mean, typically lower rates will increase demand for property prices unless the Canadian government puts on some more, more controls around the mortgage market, making it harder for Canadians to get mortgages. But what politician really wants to do that? It's already hard for first time home buyers to get properties. So are they gonna make it even harder? Are they gonna push more first time home, homeowner incentives into the market that will kind of drive some property demand? So this is really like a completely fascinating time for us. And that's why we're interested in what's going on with this Fed pushing in money into the market and the Fed's moves on interest rate because the interest rates, sorry, because the Bank of Canada is likely going to have to mimic the Fed, even if they delay their decisions on, on dropping rates this fall, sooner or later, they're likely going to have to follow what the Fed is doing. And there you have it, everyone. Hopefully you found that useful. We love this stuff. I know sometimes we get into the weeds on it. Hopefully we were able to clearly sum, uh, summarize some of our thinking. It really does have some of this stuff in the financial markets in the U.S. really does have the possibility of obviously affecting Canada, the Bank of Canada's interest rate decisions, which will then affect Canadian real estate investors right here in this country. We'll be constantly giving you updates. Hopefully today give you something to think about. Till next time, your life, your terms.